So how can you become more? What would they think? 95% fast results. What do you see works? What really works for the clients that we have worked with? And because now if you talk about high performers, we have high standards. Because running the marathon will be an ego boost, growth mindset. If you're a female, for example, you should not do cold showers every day. One of the key things that we also coach. Physical, mental, psychological. What are your goals? I did my first freelancer business when I was 14. I was not respecting my physical health. How's my team doing? And my body just to scream at me. And this is where I fully collapsed. Welcome back to the Get Cracking podcast and hopefully you're watching us on YouTube because this is where everybody should be by this time. It's already many videos are kind of live and we are back with the podcasting and today we have Linda. Hi Linda. Hello, thank you for having me. Super happy to be here. Uh, so today, for those who just tune in, who don't, doesn't know me and doesn't know Linda, so we, will, we are speaking usually about entrepreneurship or startup and tech and life or just a cool people stories. And uh, today you expect to hear the uh, great story of Linda. Like it's, it's, it's a bit unusual, I would say, at least from my side, that's how I evaluate it. It was a burnout and now you're a businesswoman. This is really impressive. And then also we dive in more into human performance and optimization and topics like longevity and then performance and getting better and especially for high performing people. That's what I understood, right? 100%. Um, but before we gonna get into the harder topics, uh, could you give us maybe a short intro? Intro: Who is Linda, and what is this Beyond Sapiens thing? Sure, thank you. Yes, so I'm Linda, and I am the founder and co-CEO of Beyond mm -hmm. Sapiens. And I usually like to describe myself of having this three-folded background where I start to explain about myself. So I am a master in. Uh, economics. So I've done strategic business management and I'm expertising in neural leadership. Then this is like the business part of me where I worked through my career from sales to marketing to market leadership into entrepreneurship. Then there is this other side of me, which is health and uh, the body side of things, I would say. So I also done my personal training license. I'm a nutritionist and I even worked as a personal trainer for some time in my past. And this has really put me into the field of health and understanding how can I really optimize my body? How can I work with health and really, yeah, just work with that and become better in the field? And I'll now be able to pour that into the business side as well. Then the third bucket is psychology, so the mind. So this is the last part that came, maybe the latest. So I studied psychology during my university studies and I've always been interested into the human mind. And I've been able to connect so many different things to my past, which I think we will be jumping into later on. So that is technically dividing who I am. And now what Beyond Sapiens does is all of these things. So Beyond Sapiens is a company which is focusing on human optimization, holistic human optimization. And we want have to help individuals, especially high performers, to really tap into their fullest potential. So how can you become more? How can you become the 2.0 version of yourself? And yes. So that would be a nutshell description. <laughs> uh, short and sweet. And I think, so when I thought about this episode and then like, you know, what should we discussing? So and uh, really the first, first maybe half of the podcast, I was like, yes, I, we really need to dive in into the topics. It's like, so how exactly we would get better. And uh, I think without further ado, we just need to kind of, we just need to dig into it. So like, why do you think people should care about you know getting better and improving their life and improving their performance that's a great question i would maybe ask why should people not um because if we think about it depending on our belief systems of course but we have this lifetime and we can either choose to make the most of it or just live by the waves or go by the flow no. with our people and i think most people like if we think about our childhood we are being brought up in ways where we don't really have much to say what is affecting us but the sad part is that most people continue on that part and they are determining their most of their life based on what is being imprinted in them in early years versus you actually taking charge of your life and also thinking about okay who am I now who do I really want to become and if you can start maximizing all of those areas you might become something that you never thought could be even possible you can bring better solutions to this world even 
So I would say that the core of why you should want to improve yourself is that what can that give for you and for this world and really thinking bigger and daring to challenge yourself to see outside of your or ordinary, I would say. So yeah, this is first my high level answer. I will let you dig deeper. In, into it. You know, what's interesting, uh, recently I used to, I, I visited Vilnius in Lithuania and I was seeing one of my friends and colleagues and we had like some also discussions on, on the business topics, but then also on the just kind of more psychological. Yeah. And what we can also agree that we both are from USSR families, right? So then our parents, they have this kind of footprint of USSR when it's like when everybody is, is the same. And then it was really uncommon to be different from everybody. And then we have this engraved thinking is that as in Russian, it would be like, what would they think? Mm. Um, you know, implying to your neighbors, your colleagues, or like any, anybody else. So it's like, because being different back then was abnormal and like not supported because everybody was supposed to be the same. And then because it's engraved in the generation for, for my parents, right, then it's somehow transmitted further to like to me and to friend of mine. And then we are like, okay, thanks God we are recognizing it, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks God we are developing the personalities to say like, like, I don't care what do they think. I mean, like I have my personality and this is how I want to be this. I want to go like, you know, further. Yeah. What, what do you say about that? Is it, is it a common thing to people? To want to go forward or? Or like this kind of footprint of generation or it's like, it's one of those things that kind of you know, is impacting our behavior. Yes, 100%. And that's exactly what, what you're correct there. So it's that it's coming from generations yeah. and we're just continuing the same pattern without stopping and questioning, yeah. is this really what to do? And this is where I think we're living a little bit like zombies in a sense. We're not stopping and reflecting yeah. of what is the true essence. And if we think about evolution also, so we have so much, we have science, technology, everything is growing so rapidly, AI, there's coming all of these solutions. Yeah. But if we continue just with old patterns coming from years behind right. and we don't stop, what is the AI version of humanity or something like this? So I think there is so much potential and only like most of your actions, most of your thoughts, like 5% are conscious, mm. something like this. 95% are unconscious and subconscious, affecting your behavior, affecting every decision that you're making. So if we think about it, 95% unconsciously is driving what you do in your life. And I think that is really crazy if you really think about it deeper in. But if you think then, okay, how can I try to bring more to the conscious mind? So how can I more consciously choose what I want? Consciously choose how I want to sculpt myself. So think about these Greek sculptures where they're really thinking at each point, how can you really form the best version of yourself? Because for now, I don't think there is any limits to what you can do as a human being. Mm. And whether it's your mind or your body... If you really think, what are the limitations? There are these individuals that are able of incredible performance, whether it's these extra flexible individuals, people standing cold for hours. Like there is this superhuman <laughs> type of individuals. And I think each of us has that potential. But if we are not questioning and tapping into what is that superhuman aspect of me, how can you ever find that? Because you're driven by this 95% of unconscious patterning. So what do you say, like, how do we shift it more towards consciousness? So how do I make it first 90% then even less? Yes. Um, this is maybe some psychologists will come at me. <laughs> but of course, we will always be driven by that. Yeah. It's your brain's behavior to survive. Like your brain's only like task is to make you survive. So you're going to still do many unconscious things. But I think it really comes to how can we maximize the conscious part or the aware part? And I usually talk about performance in general in terms of the, this triple A uh, uh. method that I don't know if someone else is using it. I thought that it's my idea, but it's this triple A of like awareness, action and analysis. And I think to turn more towards this, the first A is an important one here because awareness. The more you can start to become aware of each thought that is going in your head is decision. decision. So whenever you choose something, just stopping and becoming aware. Is this conscious? Is this unconscious? What is affecting me to do this decision? Is there fear? Is there emotion? Is there some patterning coming from my past? What is making you make this decision? Same with behavior. Same with the friends that you're spending time with. Same with the things that you're doing in your life. And usually we have these clues of 
in your childhood, early childhood, that's when you have maybe least of this conditioning happening. So something you really enjoyed in your childhood, these are usually things that are still within you when you grow up. So if you can start to tap into those things that really bring you enjoyment, that you're really passionate, but you're somehow just pushing to the back behind the scenes. So for you to become more conscious and start thinking about what is your potential, I think awareness is 100% number one. So you need to become aware. The second part is to take action, to do something differently, because if nothing changes, nothing will really change. And that's where I think people often go wrong. And I'm also victim for that for sure myself, because it's so easy to go the old way. It's so easy to go to the back where you know how things work. So taking different action and taking action towards what you think could be better. Then there will be trial and error. But that's when we have the analysis part, which is the third part of this uh, AAA model. So analyze what worked, how did it feel? Why did it not work? What can, what did I learn? And that's when you will most likely have again, new awareness, new action, new analysis. And this, I think is a simple method for you to start really thinking about this in your own life. How can you do things differently and start to tap into more of this true essence of your potential? Actually, interesting. I never heard this triple, <laughs> triple A, but I heard I heard similar frameworks that are built like you know around the same kind of model. When you're you know you need to maybe plan, plan, do, and review. Maybe they didn't uh, they didn't call it like a triple A, but like something similar. And I, I also I'm I'm a big fan of uh, frameworks and the systems <laughs> because they actually once you you take a framework, you take a system, then you implement it in in the life or in business or your work. Uh, and then you'll see like what it gets. If it's if if you don't implement, you don't have results. Or if you implement something wrong to the wrong place, you get the wrong results. This is this is completely true. I think we also are we are craving for fast results. And can I say you know tips and tricks? And the internet is full of this. You know the three best ways. This is you do these three things and you'll be happy. Uh, maybe then the question is for you. So you work already with you know several clients, and then you're in the field for quite a while. What do you see works for uh, your target audience, audience, which is high performance people? Yes, I love that question, and I will have a very not nice answer. <laughs> You're like you'll be like, okay, this is depends. <laughs> it does depend, but the answer is exactly the problem is the quick fixes, the quick tips, the quick uh, solutions. Because I think in anything in life, if you do something with the quick solution. That is pretty much short-term thinking. You're not going to get massive results. So you might have like a bandage on your bleeding wound, but yeah, that's pretty much what you can get mm-hmm. with the quick fixes. So what really works for the clients that we have worked with and in my own experience, in my own journey of performance, I would say that you really just need to go where you least want to go. So where it hurts the most, where you have most pain, what you are avoiding This is where you need to go because the reason that you're avoiding that is exactly the issue. And before you face the harsh truth, the fact that growth is brutally hard, hard, you're not going to grow. You can grow a little bit, but only once you really decide to make the big step of going towards the shit storm, so to say, that's when you can start understanding the true core issues because most of the issues with your personality, your performance, your potential, anything that you do are in this unconscious part. And the only way for you to tap into that is by going to the hard way. And that's where when people dare to take that, of course, then we can have some elevators like quick fixes. Support, 100% number one. If you're left alone, you are running a business or you're in your busy life. If you're left alone, it's difficult for you to go through that. So support, I would say number one. Then the number second, I think, is this full acceptance and openness that you need to change your mindset. I think everything starts with what is your mentality towards your personal growth, your journey. So being open for whatever will come and accepting. Because now if you talk about high performers, we have high standards. It's like I cannot fail or I cannot um, look bad in this or I cannot take a week off or something else. So you need to be open to accept whatever will come third the way. And then I would say the last part is to see yourself as a holistic being. Because we are humans, I can start to, I don't know, take a cold shower or I can start to drink more water, which are great steps, but those are the marginal 
gains. But before you start first seeing yourself as a holistic being, you are part of your mind, part of your body. And you need to work with yourself with this holistic awareness because everything affects everything in you. So before you understand these three things or have these three things, I think it's difficult for you to take these measured quick steps. So yeah, I think that is my <laughs> not liked answer for your question. I mean, just, just to summarize, at some point, I don't know if somebody is listening to us, I haven't seen me smiling like super hard, but then, you know, <laughs> I just... I just recognize some patterns of like, you know, my thinking or um, we, they just found there is run club that is happening and I, and I joined them and I, I hate running. I just, I hate running. And then we are on the run uh, and we're having just slow pace run and then we're chatting and I'm saying that, okay, somebody asked me, are you running for long? And I'm like, no, this is my third time running ever. Yeah. And then next sentence, I'm saying, I'm planning to run the marathon this <laughs> this year. And then the person is like, why? Yeah. Like it's country. I was like, because like, this is why, because I hate it. And I thought like, okay, this, then I should do it yeah. because I can, I don't like it. I hate it. Then this means that gives me, you know, discomfort to go through something and go something I don't like. So then train my brain. So then I, I'm more resilient and in some other areas of my life. So while you've been saying about that, I was just <laughs> reflecting like, okay, yeah, then I did write at least in this <laughs> small moment, but let's see if I run the marathon. I'm, I'm committed. <laughs> well done. I love that. Uh, why did you, how, what made you start running, especially was, what was started there? Like, was it just to do something you don't really like? Or? The, yeah. So there are two elements to that. So one is the, um, doing something that I don't like, like I'm, I'm doing a lot of sports and then I can also, it is, it is a lifestyle for me. I go to gym regularly and I like it. This is how it clears my brain and I'm comfortable. I also see, I see friends there sometimes, or I'm just alone. So it is, um, it's part of my being nowadays. Right. And then I'll sometimes I thinking that, you know, for other people, gym would be a stress. It's something they don't like. And then they do it because of the health reasons and they want to maybe look better, feel better, more energy. Right. And then I thought like, okay, but then if gym is positive for me, then there shouldn't be something negative like for other people. And then I found out that, you know, running could be one of those. Um, one. And then second funny thing is that I, I've seen like a statistic somewhere in the internet that once people turn uh, 29, 39, 49, this is, they have this craving that they're kind of late. And then they start running marathons, triathlons, and then Ironman's sorts of runs or whatever. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, I turned 29. So now it is, now it is the year to <laughs> feel more uncomfortable and to run the marathon and, you know, yeah, just, well done. just this thinking. <laughs> it will be well done once I run the marathon. I, it was interesting that I almost, I almost subscribed for a uh, half marathon, uh, which is happening, I think next Saturday, but then a friend of mine kind of convinced me not to do it because of the health reasons, because obviously I'm, I'm not ready. And mm -hmm. I think more of the joints and I think. I can run it, but then it might result to injuries and then to me feeling bad for a whole week and then missing out on all other things, aspects of life. How do you see this? So what, what would you say to me if you would hear like, okay, he, he's subscribing for like a marathon when he's completely not ready? Yes. I think the right decision that you said there, that mm. if you're not ready, you should not do it because is it giving more positive things or is it creating harm? Mm. So evaluating, but I would like to take one step back because something you said there is that it's well done for you once you run the marathon. Mm -hmm. It's well done that you started mm -hmm. to run. Uh, it doesn't matter will you ever run the marathon, in my opinion, because you started a process. And if you can start loving and learning through the process, that's most likely going to give you much more than actually running the marathon. Because running the marathon will be an ego boost in a sense, like, <laughs> or, or it, completely. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, <laughs> It's going to be an accomplishment, yeah. right? But if you can see the process of starting to run as an accomplishment, you're going to shift your whole mentality towards, oh, growth is not me running the marathon and succeeding. Growth is me starting something that is very uncomfortable for me, for me going through these emotions or physical <laughs> sensations mm. of doing that. So I think that's the number one part of like, and yes, there is a difference if you just start things and never go through. But I think that's a different context than this of starting something really difficult and then learning through that. And something I would ask for you is like, why didn't you like the running or for you to reflect it yourself? What is it in that that you don't like and how does it really make you feel? If this is the second layer that you can learn from, 
this process, I think you might find a gold of like, yeah, it's uncomfortable. There's most likely something else, something maybe emotional, something that can reveal to you why you don't like it that much. And then once you continue going it, maybe there is going to be something totally irrelevant from running, but you realize something in business, for example. Mm. So, and this is, I think, the growth mindset. Mm. So understanding that you can always, always learn and always grow in whatever you decide to do in life, regardless of if you go to the end result. So I would say this is my... What would be, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be provoc- provocative again, go uh, but like, what would be some clickbait things that people should do, such as, you know, running a marathon, cold showers in the morning. Could you name like a few that you see that your customers are doing? I can. Mm. I think, yeah. I think anything that challenges you or something that you have taught that you want to do, but you don't want to do. So deciding to do the thing that you have always postponed or always had in mind, like I want to start a podcast, but I don't have time or Mm -hmm. I want to do this. So I think that is one thing for sure. But then when it comes to this physical stress and all of our, like, I know that you did an episode about uh, cold showers, for example, or like with Lee about the cold exposure Mm. so i think anything that creates this stressful state for your body can be good but it also depends on where you are at life how much stress do you have and for like now i'm going a little off rails but if you're a female for example you should not do cold showers every day because that's gonna mess up your hormones Mm. and when it comes to performance i guess you're asking this of like what is some clickbait thing someone can do for optimizing towards this potential so i think uh, the number one thing is to do something that challenges you, for sure. Then I think to prioritize your health. Like anything that you can do one thing to just start, let's say, eating healthier, sleeping better. Because maybe I will take it as sleeping better. So if you're not sleeping well, you're like having you go today to bed at 8, tomorrow you go at 12. This is going to mess up all of your energy system, all of your inner internal biology. And you're not going to be able to perform at your best. Plus, you don't really have much mental capacity to think about things such as why do I hate running? How can I learn through this process? So I say the constant, continuous, constant sleep routine is going to be one of the key things that we also coach all super early on for all of our clients. Because if you don't have that, you don't have really the foundations. Not that much of a clickbait <laughs> advice, but still, that's the fact. Uh, another, the third one would be priorities. Like, I think many of us are being run by other people's schedules, other people's agendas, but we are not really stopping to think like, what is my priority? So understanding your priorities on a deeper level. So whether this is calendaring for you, whether this is putting a clear to-do list for you, something that gives structure for you to follow through whatever you're trying to accomplish or work through as a process. I think those but feel free to challenge me more to go deeper into a specific. No, I 100% agree. And also you've added about like, let's say, for example, cold exposure, not completely right for a female all the time. Mm-hmm. I also, there was a study, I didn't read the study, so I'm not signing under this. But then after the physical exercise, the cold exposure or like some more cold exposure than you should have will lead uh, all actually to destruction of your muscles so you shouldn't be doing cold showers after the gym for example yeah. so then there is lots of these elements uh but then also like the tuning back to the conversation we had in the very beginning once you've been mentioning that holistic approach of actually evol- first you need to evaluate your kind of self like yeah. all together you know physical mental psychological it's all because you're like one being and then after that, moving to the next step was like, okay, what do we do now with this? Okay, what are the concrete steps and actions? You know, we can start today to fine tune my concrete self to the better self, you know, tomorrow or like the year after that. So it is like the way I say it, it is really, in a sense, complex, mm-hmm. maybe not complicated once you break it down, but it is a complex thing. And then also it's, it's spread thin to like years ahead. Yes. That's the way I see it. And you're right. And this is why, why did we choose to make a business about this? It's yeah. <laughs> such a difficult concept to put into a business model. And you're completely right. The awareness, and before you had the awareness, it 
it's so difficult to take the action part. So that's why this triple A model is so effective because once you have the awareness, you understand yourself as this holistic being, the actions you can do, then they're going to be super structured. They're going to be super personalized for you because I struggle with different things than you struggle with. So if I tell you, you should try this before I know your baseline, before I know who, how is yeah, your holistic yeah. self, well, I cannot say this advice for you because I'm not sure if it will work for you. And the same goes the other way around. So that's why what we, for example, emphasize a lot is in the assessment phase. So we want to understand anything that goes to your physical and mental being. So the psychology and physiology of you as an individual. Then all the steps of like, what is the issues? Where do you really want to go in life? What do you want? What are your goals? And only asking about goals for most people. I think there's a study like 95% like of people don't have clear goals or mm. something like this. And how can we start taking you towards a direction if we don't know where you want to go? So it's just like shooting these different things in the air without knowing. I say what sticks, what's, what's there? Yeah, what's there? <laughs> where is this going to go? So with most of the clients, the basic work is after assessment, just understanding, okay, what do you even want mm. in, in life? Even with high performers. Mm. And only then can we start taking measured action. And this is where I think any fitness journey or maybe fitness journey is a great example fails because people just want to, let's say, lose weight. Simple example. But before you understand where you are at, at now, what do you, how much weight do you want to lose? How do you really want to look like? What is your ideal goal? When do you want to achieve? And there is so many things that goes into the process before you can start taking the action. And the same goes exactly with this human potential uh, optimization or human yeah. optimization. So, yeah. yeah. It's interesting because once you, once you tell me more about those topics, I actually have like more and more side questions that kind of digging all my podcast structure kind of to the, to the bin. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but then also there is something else that I really wanted to ask you. Uh, it was maybe more about kind of your story because in this podcast, we not only trying to give these actionable tips, like we already done a bunch, uh, but then also see people behind the scene. So then, uh, so Linda, you had a, a burnout. Yes. Uh, so how was it, you know, walk us through like the story, like how, how was it? Sure. Okay. First of all, I think I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So I did my first freelancer business when I was 14 because I was like, I want to work. I want to be able to afford a horse and my parents will not buy that for me. So I was like, I want to do that. And I was super disciplined, super ambitious since a young age. And I was able to find a person who was willing to certify me as a like eyelash technician or something like this. That was the only thing that something would want to certify me as a 14 year old so that I could start working. And I started working. Since then, I've been working. And this is a mentality which I talked about one, on one podcast about that stress has been something that I had had a very complex relationship with because I have seen stress as only a good thing. And stress can be good to a certain amount, but if you only see stress as a good thing, that is going to create this toxic cycle for yourself. And this is where I went. So since an early age, at one point I had six jobs at the same time. I was like a market leader for the full Finnish market as a 23-year-old. And I'm super proud of my career and what I have accomplished, but I'm also looking back that I was so much running on top of myself. I was not having boundaries. I was not respecting my physical health and this kind of like continued throughout my studies I worked then there was a point where I was writing my bachelor's thesis at Hanken and this is where I was the market leader I was writing thesis doing university full-time plus I was dancing 18 hours per week and I was putting so much stress and pressure on myself and I didn't feel stressed I felt that I'm performing well everything is good I did not see an issue and this is what I talk about with my clients this is a simple model of like the mind and the body and we have two bubbles like two round bubbles of the mind and the body and the optimal point is that these both have an equal voice in your life so you can listen to what your mind is saying but you're also listening to what your body is telling you how you're tired what is communicating to you what happened to me and for many other high performers is that the mind bubble just keep on growing, whereas the body keeps on shrinking to a point where the body has zero voice or impact in saying what it needs. The mind is just overriding everything. And this is why, for example, people, entrepreneurs can work 
like full days with three hours of sleep. It's that they're overriding all of their bodily signals. On, and this is the same reason why people then at some point might get an acute stroke or you get diagnosed with an illness or you just burn out because your body has been trying to scream for help for so long. You're ignoring it. You're overriding it. You feel pumped up by the stress and the performance. And that's when your body shut down. And this is what happened to me. So first I had actually an organ failure or I had an ectopic pregnancy, which is uh, not a normal state for you to have. So it was just my body was so off balance. My hormones were totally off. And I got this, which led to like, no one knew that I had it. I even didn't know I had it until it ripped off my follicular tube and I had an internal bleeding. And that's when I <laughs> remember I was taken to the hospital and I was doing in this, like I had the operation, the procedure was done for me to remove that or, or part of my organ. And when I was waking up from the hospital, I remember my first thought was like, how's my team doing? I was still running the same pattern. I was not thinking that I went just through this whole thing. I was thinking that I'm a leader of my team. I need to understand where they're going, what is happening. And I was texting with my team and calling my boss. And then my boss told me like, Linda, I think you should slow down. Like, I think you just went through a very like hectic situation for yourself. You should stop. So that was the first hit for me. I was, I was not stopping. The mind was still driving. And this is where the unconditional things of like, you have, this is part of my identity. It was part of my identity. So I continued working until six months later, I was like, okay, my work doesn't feel like I want to continue. So I did a huge decision to quit. And only once I quit, did I create enough silence for my money mind to shrink a little bit and my body just to scream at me. And this is where I fully collapsed. So I created space and that's when I just fell off and I could not like, it was a period of three months where I did not function. Like I did not do anything. I barely got out of bed and I was totally burned out. And this is the story behind how it went. And after that, I really realized the power of our mind. We can accomplish anything, but we need to have boundaries and we need to do it in a healthy way. And that's when I started to go to therapy. I started to take a personal coach. I started coaching and I really started to reframe, build the awareness that I talked about what, and what is happening in me? What is the, uncon the conditioning in my mentality and my behavior? And how can I start to change that? And I meditated for like years before that, but that's when I started meditating every day. So I started to really implementing the things that I personally needed to continue in a more healthy way. So I had to reframe that toxic relationship to stress and understand, first of all, where it's coming from. Second of all, where is it affecting my life? And then lastly, of how can I modify it so that it is a more healthy way of acting, behaving, being. So yeah, I would say that's my story of my burnout. But this is this is insane. Like it's 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 crazy story. Yeah. Yes, it's. I think this is the first time I shared it on a podcast. <laughs> exclusive. Everybody, go please leave this um, awesomeness and support like and leave a comment because. I mean, it's it's unusual that people share like maybe the darker darker times and darker stories, yeah. and then I'm I'm just kind of I'm super happy that you can um like now you recovered and then you have the voice to share, and then also you're not only sharing your story, you're also on the journey to kind of help others preventing this kind of same same pattern because you know the topics that you say I, I recognize parts of me in them. And also I recognize parts of other people and I heard like burnout stories before and they all have, they're all different and they're all unique in a, like in a sense because it's about the kind of concrete person, but they have certain patterns and bells that the people kind of listen to. Yeah. Yes. And burnout is so common and it's like, I think it's also our society. Like, as I said, like it's the awareness, yeah. you need to have a pause to actually hear out what's happening in you. But there is so much distractions nowadays. We can just be on our phone. We can just override all the needs with distracting ourselves, which is really more bad than we think about it. And that's because we don't have the time to hear out ourselves. We don't understand what's happening inside of us. And then we focus on external things. We don't have boundaries. We don't know what we truly want. That's when we are like, okay, I can say yes to this thing. I can say yes to this thing. I want to accomplish that thing. So... I think it's easy to burn out when you're ambitious 
but it takes really strength to change your ambitions so that you are driving your ambition and that your ambition is not driving you. And another thing, you know, also I thought like, you know, super important is that if people around, like, you know, you mentioned your manager, like, you know, he really told you like in the moment to kind of, okay, stop now. But then also, I think he completely failed to tell you to stop like way before. Yeah. Like for example, but then it's a lesson for him. It's also a lesson for everybody else because also I know it is it is not easy to feedback and it's even more not easy to feedback to people who seem that they, they have their shit together, right? And yeah. I think in the moment when, when it was coming on you, you seemed like you're you're crushing it. You're like, okay, I'm I'm like a leader from our team. We have the whole Finland here. We are you we are crushing it, yeah. And I'm doing my sports and the dance and this and this and this and then like you know, you're advising others and you're feedbacking. So this is the hardest when to receive the feedback or yes. like so so then I think is another lesson that, you know, for you and for me, for like, okay, we need to spot this like in other people and maybe give them some kind of hints and or maybe some, for closer people, you need to be direct to just, hey, you know, chill, stop. Now, stop. <laughs> yeah. And this is where like, let's say depression, which is another part, like they say, like you, the people who you least expect are actually, hmm. those can be depressed. Like it's that you're so good at hiding it. Hmm. Uh, same with burnout. Like I was... I was even hiding from myself how tired I was. Mm. So how could anyone else see how tired I was? Because I was not accepting that as a fact. I did not even recognize it. I was like, exactly as you said, I'm crushing it. I'm mm. doing it. But then there is these moments I remember where I was like, I was supposed to go to a dance class. Like I was supposed to have a three hour dance class in a row. I had a super tiring day. I had slept poorly and I was crying and I was like, I have zero effort to go there. Mm. And my mind just like, there's no option that you're not going. Mm. You're going to go. Mm. And I pushed myself to go. And that's where this like, it was not like I have never had like a bad relationship with myself that it would be somehow punishing myself or like being like, you're not worthy if you're not going. But still this like, I know I'm capable of. Like, I know that I can do this, but it doesn't mean that you can do something that you should always do it. And mm. that is healthy for you to do it. And I think this is where the boundary exactly comes into play of understanding just because you can do something, is it good or bad? Kind of for the marathon, is it going to, like, even though you could run the marathon, mm. is it going to be more good or more bad for you? A and this is, I think, there is different places where you can break your boundaries and break your records. That's fine, but it needs to be a controlled environment. It needs to be a really decided decision or, like, conscious decision to do that. So for spotting the burnout, for example, I think it's like just talking about like, honestly, like trying to be your own best friend. Mm. And if my best friend would have been crying that they're so tired, they don't want to go to the dance class. I would not have told them that you should go. <laughs> I would have told them that, hey, it's fine. Like you should stay home and you should rest. So thinking about what is the voice in your head talking to you, because we constantly have this dialogue going around. How can we stop ourselves and understand how is the dialogue looking like is it good is it bad how can i make it more of being my own best friend because i think that is the first thing and then if you are a friend and you see someone acting up in these ways maybe you can try to question it as you say like even though someone is crushing it but if it sounds like i think this is too much just asking like how you're really doing like or do you ever feel tired and trying to bring the mirror in front because if you are denying something the only way for you to realize that is if someone puts the mirror in front of you and says like hey i don't think this is healthy i think you should take better care of yourself like i really care about you you should uh do something differently so so yeah even though someone is crushing it it doesn't mean that they're really yeah. crushing it and then one one practical team i mean like so i i used to i used to lead teams before uh and uh, the one of the like practical tools that stuck with me from co-founder of milton consultancy mm -hmm. And what he said is that you can go to someone and say, how are you really? Yes. And then you do this pause and you do this really. And then it's so simple in a sense, but it works amazing. You're like, you're sitting down and they say, how are you really? Mm. And then you just wait, you just shut up. You don't explain what you mean, what, what you're inclining to hear. Like, are you bad? No, no, no. You just shut up. And then you listen back because people usually in a sense, they feel like, okay, like now I need to like... I need to tell how am I like really for real. And then this is the moment that, you know, you can really help them out just by asking. I love that. 
Yeah. It's such a good one. Please note everybody. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Wow, what a story. Uh, I kind of... I'd like to move on a bit for like <laughs> because it was it was a bit kind of sad and then also we are walking towards maybe wrapping up the podcast yeah um, and then so to maybe to finish on a high note um, maybe from your experience and then through your life experience and through your business experience and through your education and the customer work what would be the one thing that you would suggest everybody to do if they'd like to become high performance? I would say something I did not expect that I would maybe say, but I really think honesty for yourself. If if you're being super honest to yourself, I think you can really accomplish anything. And I think you can create an amazing career, an amazing life, an amazing, like healthy relationship with whatever you're doing. So always seeking for the truth. And I think this comes to whether it's speaking the truth for others, speaking the truth, like if someone asks you how you're really doing, are you being truthful? And then if you're asking yourself, are you, how am I doing? Am I being truthful? So I think really being as honest as you can for yourself and seeking to be your truest version of you and i know this sounds like yeah right but so many times when we discuss something with someone and someone says an opinion you might just agree like oh yeah even though you think totally differently so catch yourself where are you people pleasing or where are you just doing something for someone else or saying yes to an event or something because someone expects you so becoming extremely honest and truthful for yourself, I think that is the first step and it's so easy for you, do, you to do. And if you start doing that, I promise it will start transforming your life, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your personal life and relationships. So really being to the truthfulness and the honesty, uh, that is number one thing for that I have learned through my own experience, through all of the clients that I work with. And many work maybe in a job that they feel like, yes, this is amazing. And then once they come closer to the truth, they realize I actually, I actually hate everything about this job. So how honest are you being with yourself? And how much is that honesty coming up front with all other people? Number one. I love it. <laughs> yes. I mean, like the honesty and also if you want to do business, I mean, this is the one of the number one traits you should have. So it also expands after yourself. Uh, you also have a YouTube. I'm giving a hint to everybody that you can check it out. But uh, where you'd like people, if somebody wants to check more about you, so where should they go? Sure. I'm mostly active maybe now on Instagram. So I'm just Linda underscore, underscore Gronfers. And then LinkedIn with my name. And then, of course, beyondsapiens.co is our website. And also you can find the YouTube through beyond uh, underscore sapiens. All the links will be in the show notes below. You'll find them there. Please go check out Linda. Please maybe become her customer. She needs customers. <laughs> and then also subscribe, follow, follow us in all the social media and follow Linda and her company. Cool. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Linda. Thank you so much for having me. Well done. Yes.